Hello boys and girls, it's Karen Lee in my living room in South Berwick for Karen Reads. I have two short books for you today. One of them is The Bear Who Shared by Katherine Rayner. She did the story and the pictures. Katherine lives in Edinburgh, Scotland, which is part of England or Britain. She does silkscreen and watercolor, and she does beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Okay, the bear who shared. You might think about the name she gives the fruit and why she gave it that name. Norris was wise, and being a wise bear, Norris knew the oranges were the best fruit of all. You can see him staring at it. So Norris waited under the orange tree he knew something special would happen, but Norn wasn't the only one who loved oranges. You can see a couple other animals who love oranges just near my fingers. Tulip and Violet loved them too. They clambered closer to the orange and gazed at it. It looked delicious. Wise Norris watched and waited. Tulip and Violet sniffed the orange. It smelled of honey and sunny days. And Norris just waited. Tulip and Violet listened to the orange, but it didn't make a sound. Tulip and Violet were just about to have a little lick of the porridge when when uh oh there it goes. Womp. Norris's weight was over. The plurange was his.
But what about Tulip and Violet? Well, Norris was wise, and he was also kind. He starts to peel it. So he shared the delicious sun-kissed soft as cotton candy florange with violet and tulip too. And Norris was right being wise, he was usually right. A special thing had happened under the Florence tree. Norris had made two new friends and from then on, they shared everything. Okay, the next book is called Last stop on Market Street. It's written by Matt de la Pena, and he won the Newbery Medal in 2016 for writing it. The Newbery is for the most distinguished contribution to children's literature in the whole United States for the whole year. So it's very distinguished. It's a very big deal. And he's a very young man to have won that. Uh, I think he's just in his 20s. And um, the illustrator is Christian Robinson. He's won some of the Coretta Scott King Awards. Coretta Scott King is the widow of um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And she has special awards for literature. Um, he's one of our African-American contributors, so we're happy to have another one like that. Okay, last stop on Market Street. CJ pushed through the church doors and skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, How come we got away for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with, with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car?
Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the door swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The old man across the way was tuning a guitar. The old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure that CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curves on their bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact, their noses too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar was already, the guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered. I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound 
and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the skies. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus running the corner out of sight and the broken street, street lamps still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, Me too, CJ. Now, come on. And they've got their hair nuts on and they're serving soup in the soup kitchen. Okay. Two good books today. I enjoyed hanging out with you. I'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.